Okay, so uh, my name is Courtney Kessel, and I think somehow um, my bio kind of got uh, missed in the program. So I'm going to say a quick bit about um, who I am and where I've come from. Um, I'm, a, I'm a mother, artist, and academic, and arts administrator living in Athens, Ohio, um, which is, for those of you that aren't familiar, <laughs> sort of midway between New York and Chicago. Um, I was born in 1974 and went back for my um, MFA in sculpture and expanded practices. Um, and I received a certificate in women and gender studies at Ohio University. Um, graduating in 20, uh, 2012, um, I was a single mom when I started, uh, still am, more or less, single mom, um, going through a divorce with a four-year-old. Um, so unlike... Um, Many of you, uh, I, as a non-traditional student, I was actually sort of encouraged um, to explore that sort of specific of my life, um, i.e. the fact that I was 35 and um, had a child. Um, and in, in, in that sense, um, I, maybe that gave me a little bit more of an agency in terms of sort of really, um, really investigating that and having that in it as an acceptance. Um, but since then, I've exhibited um, nationally and internationally, and um, with and without my daughter, for that matter. Um, she came t with us to Chile last year. Um, Natalie curated, um, co-curated curate, co -curated, um, a new materialisms Chile um, that my daughter Chloe and I um, performed at. So there's a slide of it in here. So, um, okay. So uh, through sculpture, performance, and video, uh, I hope to make visible the quiet, understated, and often unseen love and labor of motherhood. But to start, um, we heart feminists. Um, and, you know, I would be remiss to not account for the fact that without them, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today talking about and having this conversation in this um, conference. Um, not that my work... Um, looks like that or, 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 or speaks directly to that, but it is because of women in the 70s making the artwork that they were about the female experience and about their bodies and, you know, putting it out there, getting it in the gallery, of course, um, but it still wasn't so much about the mother. So sure, in, um, in the history of art, we've had plenty of uh, examples of what the glowing, smiling, idyllic, you know, angelic mother has been and is, um, but we have very little uh, subjective sort of representation of the mother in the gallery. So that said, it is in part protest that I am putting the mother in the gallery. Um, she is uh, uh, sort of like t to get that, the spoken for um, experience, the mother in the gallery that way. Um, I've been organizing, uh, thinking about this for about 10 years now. And um, I've recently sort of come to the conclusion that my work falls into these three sort of arbitrary categories of moments, holes, and stuff. So I think I'm approaching my work in sort of this um, conceptually looking at materiality and processes in terms of um, feminism and maternity and language are the three hierarch non-hierarchical um, triangle that my work is situated around. So moments. Um, moments address the sometimes fleeting often repetitive, usually mundane moments curated from life with child. Um, they're the slices of life that are called out and edited through the maternal lens. So this piece called Spaces in Between is just sort of an average um, interaction of my daughter and myself together. Um, but the the, the negative space in between our interaction is made positive by um, the sculpture um, and subsequent installation on the wall. Um, while these are sort of common times, you know, maybe not so common having like a, um, what was it, seven-year-old during your, you know, grad school graduation, um, they are the everyday experiences that do inform my practice. Um, sitting at uh, a cold restaurant, and I had a cardigan on. She sat on my lap and proceeded to get into my clothes as sort of a rebirthing and then a birthing back and forth. Um, 
I, you know, investigated that further into sort of a, a sketch or a video that then was edited into a final, final product called Sharing Space. So again, um, this is me wearing my grandmother's dentures that my mom <laughs> thought, you could maybe do something with this someday, and she was right. I mean, um, I was interested in these, how those, those, you know, of course I have teeth, but putting that mouth in my mouth uh, uh, warped and changed my mouth in a way, and then having Chloe do the same thing with her mouth and playing around with that sort of the maternal lin lineage of, of things in your mouth. Um, I cast my tongue in bronze called the mother tongue, and at one point she was getting ready for bed, and um, I had just I had just like finished polishing it and cut off all the you know all the gating from the bronze casting and brought it home, and she was we were in the bathroom for sort of the bathroom routine and. And she's like, what's this, Mom? And I was like, well, that's my tongue. And, um, and I said that it was called Mother Tongue, so I had that conversation about, you know, origination and where, those, where it comes from. And she actually put it in her mouth, so we did a little series of photo, a photo series of that. Um, again, playing with that, the things in your mouth that, like, why are you so comfortable doing that with your, that intimate space of mother and child? So, um, holes. Um, holes refer to the parts missing, or cut out of the material. Um, this piece is called Without Chloe. Um, it's where I've started to take the space in our house and photo documentation and take out and remove the things that are of her, by her, or about her. Um, it's a series of five pieces now that's still in its sketch form. It's pretty, pretty recent, which also goes into the following called category of stuff as well. But um, So... Um, so in terms of this materiality and being sort of, um, you know, the mother and child being cut from the same or of that same material, this piece is called Cut from the Same, talking about that, um, you know, being of the same material but then removed, uh, um, you know, speaking to the difference but the similarity. Um, and so like spaces in between, the inside spaces... Um, which I didn't mention before, but have um, fluorescent pink highlighted. So when it's on the wall, it doesn't translate in photographs like this so well, but on the wall with the lights on it has this uh, sort of pink haloed glow that really does highlight the difference, um, separation. Um, the materiality is based on the constant state of construction that a relationship is in, um, which is neither fixed nor finished. A lot of the materials that I work with are, um, are of sort of construction materials, like the wood, the drywall, metal, uh, paper. But I'm interested not in terms of, um, you know, like a, an object acting upon another object, um, which I would think of as being sort of masculinist. I'm, I'm interested more in um, that removal of material or a stenciling of sorts being... Um, it's, it's removed, it's not an action upon, you know, in this like kind of violent, um, although cutting through something is fairly violent. Um, but again, I think of that in, in sort of cut from the same, it's the same materiality being removed. Um, so this is a four-hour performance piece that I did um, where I built the wall out of drywall, and then I, I um, cut sentences that weren't prescribed, that I was just sort of thinking about... Um, being the good enough mother and the fact that I wasn't with my child right now while I was performing my work. And, you know, so I, I'm cutting these um, sentences with a handsaw out of the drywall. And so on the other side and inside, you could hear the cutting and the sawing and the, the, the debris sort of falling down at the bottom. Um, but the words were backwards. And then from the, from the outside... Um, space that, you know, was not privileged inside the gallery, but that sort of, like, external viewing space. Um, they weren't really a part of it, but then they could read the language. Um, so, what else did I have with that? Um, again, I'm really interested in language, um, being sort of of the, you know, as Arigre talks about being of, of the uh, paternal world and how I can make that a feminist maternal um, application of it. So I think that's in part part of that removing of material as opposed to um, it's somehow trying to figure out how to own it. So um, playing with those words of, you know, the gendered words of caregiver and breadwinner, um, these are two, two, and it's in the breadwinner, 
the, the, the lighting canceled out the A, so it looks like bread as in B, B R E D, which has a whole different connotation, yeah. but it really was B R E A D. Um, but flipping those words, they're like 10 foot long. Um, sorry, that's not meters. Um, and, you know, uh, cut out of steel, and they're suspended where they sort of reflect up and then cast a shadow down. Um, so the stuff. Um, the stuff is the stuff that's laying around the house all the time. It's the, uh, the stuff that basically says you have a child. <laughs> it's the stuff that, um, that wouldn't be in your life if you didn't have a child. Um, and so this is one of my first performances and um, sort of the most notorious. Um, it's called Imbalance With, and we've, uh, my daughter and I have performed it almost once a year um, as sort of, and it's turned out just to be that way, but it, it does, it changes, and it ebbs and flows, and it's, it's like a still or a portrait of where we are in that space and time. This was one of the original um, iterations of it, and at the very beginning, when um, I first performed it, I didn't know how it was going to end. And um, so in this performance, for those of you that don't know, I should start there, it starts off with an empty seesaw. We both get on, I'm heavier, she stays on, and I begin to add things to her side. First thing is her um, curated crate of objects and books and toys and things that gets bungee corded on there. And then I get to the other side, and I still heavier. So then I, I add all my books and research, you know, this like big stack of books that then gets bungee corded on. And um, food and pots and pans and dirty laundry. And in other iterations, there's suitcases and bikes and violins and, um, you know, all the things that happen to be of that time right then and there. Um, I'll get bungee corded to her side until we have this balance. And sometimes there's applause then, but there's, that's not the end of the performance because it's not over until she's sort of ready for it to be over, which is not that it's child-centric, but rather that it totally and specifically talks to my ability to make work. I can only make the work so long as she is content and happy. So... We stay up there for variable amounts of time. Sometimes it, I'm, I'm like shaking because I'm constantly having to counteract every little movement she does, you know. And I'm like, God, Chloe, when are you going to be done? You know, like. And other times I'm like, Wow, that was really quick, you know. So, um, this was the one in, in um, the Museum of Contemporary Art, uh, in balance within in the museum in Santiago, Chile. And in this iteration, I put the stuff all around the seesaw. So, you know, is this like constantly picking things up around the house kind of action that took place. Um, this was also the museum. It's a beautiful museum. It's really gorgeous, well attended. I think there were, what, 400 people at the opening? It was insane. I mean, it was really wonderful for that kind of support, for, the, for, the, the, um, for being like performative and the, the subject matter. So the books are always a part of the stuff, and the books are sort of, um, they create like a narrative of... Um, what I'm, what I'm currently thinking about. Um, so from the seesaw, the stuff moved to a pedestal that um, was sort of a, a pillar or structure of support that held something up. Not that the slide uh, projector was the ultimate thing, but um, it was really in part of and connected to the um, clear, it was clear, clear film leader that um, I, I, I have a script typewriter and, you know, to make one minute had to type the same word for, you know, about that much. <laughs> so it'd be like, she, 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 she. But it's, it's hand-typed, so the, the words kind of move around and everything. Um, but there was sort of like a concrete poem or so. I'm limited by the width of the clear leader um, as well. But, um, and a playing on words, so like water and matter and all those things. But it goes and it's interlinked down through Chloe's soccer trophy on the floor, which is on top of a book called Raising a Daughter. And then at back up through the film projector, down through a hanger and um, the Italian espresso maker, and then through the, the lid of the pan, and then back up through the, um, the reel. So this one was a little bit of a tribute to um, other people as well. I had like my grandmother's stuff in there and like a couple of my best friends, you know, books and stuff like that. Um, so then finally the stuff is sort of freed from its other, you know, um, other sort of responsibilities to do other things and it becomes its own structure in and of itself. This is a solo show that I did called Motherload. Um, 
where I gathered a bunch of things from my house and also my parents' house because they had three children who in then turn had four children, collectively, I mean, all together. And, um, and I gathered all these things that, you know, were completely and inextricably screamed, you know, child or children. And so these things were curated together and structurally placed together to, to, to sort of form these three separate, you know, sculptures that all had um, different elements in them. I mean, and, and they, weren't, they weren't necessarily objects. They weren't being used for what they were being used for. They were just all being smashed together and, um, and in a really kind of an absurd way. But every single sculpture had um, sort of a, a live element in it that was activated in some form. So this was the TV, the other, and it had a lava lamp in it. And then the other one had a disco lamp and a baby monitor. And the baby monitor was connected to this um, structure there on the corner of the table. And th this one had the fan there. Um, then I had a, another video on the other wall. But So, you know, taking that um, idea of stuff, those things that that do speak to a child, they're the things that you wouldn't have in your world if you didn't have a child, the car seats, the strollers, the, you know, clothes, the toys, the swings, the, you know, all that stuff there, um, is also the mental stuff that is on and around you all the time. So even um, when you're not constantly with them, as we are right now, except for some of us, <laughs> um, you know, you're constantly thinking about them. And that's, that's the weight of it all that I was interested in putting into the gallery. Um, again, like I said, in part protest. I did write some wonderful things, but I went off the cuff there, I guess. Um, here, I'll finish, because this is, then I'll, okay. By repositioning the non-narrative ongoing dialogic flow that occurs in the home, I hope to open up communication about the subjective experience of maternity. It is in protest that I perform the visibility of the mother in the gallery for all the mother artists before me who could not claim maternity as part of, as part of and not separated by their practice. Um, last final note, one time my daughter said to me, well, Mom, your work is all about me. And <laughs> I said, yeah, it might seem that way. But it's not all about you. It's actually because of you that I make this work. So thank you. Thank you.